Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another tutorial on uh, Kubernetes. So in this uh, tutorial, the agenda is like we'll be talking about Kubernetes controllers. Uh, we'll be also looking through what we mean by workloads in Kubernetes and what are the different kind of controllers or workload resources. So uh, to specifically say we'll be talking about replication set, deployment, stateful set, daemon set, job, cron job, replication control. There are other kind of control as well. So uh, we'll be talking about uh, quite of this in this tutorial. Okay. So before I get into the actual topic, uh, if you are, uh, have not subscribed to my channel or if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe, like this video, share and comment. So let's get started with the Kubernetes controllers basics. Okay. So in Kubernetes, uh, when we speak about controllers, uh, the controllers are uh, are control loops. So what actually this loop do is like uh, it will uh, watch for the state of your cluster, okay, and uh, it, then it make a request of changes as uh, and when needed. So so when we say about this control loop, we need to know uh, two things. One is the current state and desired state. So always, you know, the your node or your pods and you know the resources in uh, Kubernetes will have a current state, and you'll be defining what is the desired state in your controller. Okay, so based on that is what the control uh, loop will run. Okay, so what the control loop will do is like it will observe your current state. Okay, and it will check the difference between the current state and the desired state which you have mentioned in your, your controller and based on that it will act so if there is a, a difference then it will make the changes okay or if there is no uh, difference it will not uh, make any changes so that's how the control loop work so basically to say that you know each control loops uh, try to move your current cluster state uh, closer to the desired state so that's what it happens as part of your uh, the controller okay uh, to give it uh, more, you know, so uh, when the controller notify a uh, difference or notices a difference between the actual state and desired state, it will send a message to the Kubernetes API server to make the necessary change. So that's the basics of uh, Kubernetes controller. So we will see uh, how this can be done. We have different kind of controllers we can use. Okay, this will be more of a, uh, talking about the basics so you can understand uh, those things. Then. Uh, we will see how it can be done in actually in the kubernetes cluster okay so uh, the, the kubernetes controller okay so just uh, add a little bit more uh, on a pictorial way let's consider this is a node one and you have a docker uh, set up with uh, kubernetes okay and docker is the base uh, container on this kubernetes and you have two ports running okay and it have uh, three containers okay so this is a uh, set uh, uh, on this uh, your cluster okay and you have the controllers okay so you have uh, the controller have two parts actually one is the informers and the work queue and the types of controllers i'm not listing here so you have a different kind of controllers we will see it in the upcoming slide so what you have defined that you know your uh, uh, ports there should be two parts and three containers uh, in your controller you have defined it so what actually uh, now it will happen is the controllers keep uh, observing the current state. So if uh, the node is down or one of the pod is down, what it will happen is it will automatically spin up uh, the another pod to make sure that the other two pods with these three containers running. So that's how the you know, the control loop works. So I just want to show it in a pictorial way. So one of the pod is dead, so or you kill, you know, it will automatically spin up a new pod with the same configuration what we have defined in the controller okay so we'll see it in the upcoming uh, slides and tutorials okay so let's move on to the next uh, key in, in kubernetes which you need to understand is what is mean by a workload so uh, workload in kubernetes so workload is very simple so workload is an application running on kubernetes so you can just consider it's, it's an application running on kubernetes so this workload can be a single component or it can be worked together and it, it, it will run inside a set of pods. So always this application, you know, it runs inside a pod, right? So I'm taking all these uh, statements and all these uh, uh, commands based on the Kubernetes uh, standard documentation or from this. So I'll give the reference for all those things in the uh, video description which you can go through, okay? 
and you know the pod represent a set of containers right so the containers runs inside the pod or uh, you know uh, on your cluster and uh, each pod will have a defined life cycle right so the pod uh, you know uh, can be dead uh, at some point of time right so uh, what the benefit is like you know to make uh, the life easier like as an admin or what our challenges would be how to manage these pods directly right manually so that is where this uh, workload resources or controller come up into the picture where it can manage the set of pods on behalf of us so you don't need to keep uh, monitoring these pods you when something is down you just need to recreate it so once you set these controllers or workload resources it can automatically manage these pods on behalf of us okay so uh, to make sure that the right number of uh, and the right kind of ports are running so they these configured controllers okay so and it matches to the state what we specified in the controller so that's what uh, all about these uh, controllers and workload basics so now let's uh, look into the type of controllers or workload resources uh, you know in uh, from a kubernetes side so before i get into that i just want to show you like you know these are uh, the kubernetes official documentation on controllers you know it, it gives you examples on like thermostat you know when the temperature uh, how the thermostat look for the temperature in the current room temperature and you set to a desired state so that's a similar kind of example what i show like what is a control loop okay and what is the workload uh, different resources which we are going to look okay and what is the workload uh, is what defined over here so let's uh, get into the type of uh, controllers now so the types of controllers you know we'll start with a replica set okay so there there's a, a old uh, kind of controller which i will show you uh, tell you the name in the end which we may not be discussing in here okay and the second important uh, controller is deployment which we'll be using mostly on kubernetes okay and we have something called stateful set and uh, daemon set and also there is a, a control called job and there is one called cron job and uh, there is something called replication controller okay so this replication controller is more uh, you know old uh, way and now we may not be using that much more okay and which is replaced by a replica set okay so but just for your understanding i just mentioned replication controller and there are also other uh, controllers uh, available if you go to the kubernetes documentation page but these are some of the important uh, controllers which uh, you need to be aware of okay so, and uh, you know each controller have its own uh, purpose which we will uh, see in the upcoming slides and you know you can uh, use these controllers based on your need in the kubernetes okay so let's get into the replica set so the replica sets purpose is to maintain a stable set of uh, parts or so replication parts running at that given point of time so for example you're creating a, a pod in your kubernetes uh, cluster okay if you have seen my previous tutorial we have shown how to create pod uh, manually and also using pod.yaml file right so uh, you know if you create manually it's uh, create a pod if it's get the node is down or if you delete the pod it's just dead right even for single pod uh, i would recommend you create a, you know a controller so that you know you create a controller you configure it in a state like you know you need uh, this configuration with one uh, pod so what happens is since the controller is running uh, even the that pod is down it, it should recreate uh, the same container or the same pod again uh, by default you don't need to manage it manually so even for one uh, pod you know the best way is to do it with the controller okay so the replication set I uh, know you it have a defined uh, set of field okay and uh, the main uh, field is for selector uh, how to select these uh, what kind of ports should be part of that uh, replication controller right so it, it does not use all ports into that uh, controller you, you need to specify manually like you know we usually use labels for it okay and uh, how many replicas it has to run you need to mention that also into the replica set uh, yaml file so that how many ports it should be maintaining okay and there should be a, a pod template which will be specifying you know the specs and also the container uh, details okay so that you know when it uh, run this replica set uh, controller it uh, can meet all the criteria which we have mentioned okay so let's see a sample uh you know yaml file so this is how it will be like api version apps.v1 and the kind it should be a replica set okay and it have some metadata 
and uh, you know if you see the label it has mentioned some labels right uh, that part of uh, that is part of metal uh, data but if you go to the specs you have the replica so it should uh, run three replica of the core and there is a match uh, selector for match labels right so there you are using tire and front and that is the key value pair which will be looking for the label so based on that it will select all the parts uh, which matches that and there is a template uh, where it's again we are mentioning the label uh, so that uh, label uh, parts will be used for this uh, controller and also you are having a container specification okay right and some of the key uh, command we use uh, to create uh, the uh, uh, replica set of uh, parts so you will be using kubectl create a hyphen f command with the yaml file uh, you can get the details of uh, the replica set using kubectl get rs you can also use uh, kubectl describe command to get more details on the replica set uh, these things we will see it in the upcoming tutorial as a practical of each uh, you know controller separately uh, but this is more of a uh, understanding for you what are these replica set for okay now let's get into the next one which is the key uh, controller which is called deployment okay so the deployment is what mainly we will be using okay so deployment provides a declarative updates for parts and uh, replica set what does that mean okay so deployments uh, can be upgraded patched easier than replica set so it's more of a replica set upgrade version where you can uh, do rolling out of new versions of deployment making it possible to roll out changes with minimal downtime okay so deployment is used more uh, for our uh, production use cases where we can do make changes we can do updates and all those things so uh, to just give you the use cases this is directly from the kubernetes uh, documentation page so you can see what are the use cases for deployment right so create a deployment to roll out a replica set it's create parts in the background and check the status of rollout to see if it's success or not and you know declare a new state of the parts by updating the uh, part template what it does is it's uh, you know a new replica set is created and the deployment manages the moving of the part from old replica set to the new one right so what does it mean like you know the each new replica set update uh, the revision of deployment so you can uh, make the changes in the state of the parts which will create new replica sets uh, so uh, the old one get moved to the new one uh, it, there will not be any impact on you know, uh, the these changes and you can also use it for rollback of earlier deployment version you can use it for scale up of uh, deployment uh, you can also use to pause the deployment you can use to status of deployment and clean up of all the uh, replica sets so these are the use cases for uh, deployment so to understand more, as I said, we will see in the practical section where I'll be having separate video for each uh, controllers. Okay, and this is the example uh, for uh, the deployment, uh, you know, uh, the YAML file. So it uh, talks about apps v1 as a version and the kind is a deployment, right? And similar, we have a uh, metadata and you have the specs for replicas and also the label match label uh, parameter where I'm using app and GNX which is the key value pair and you have the template okay and uh, you know it's have a container spec so uh, we'll see that all those things okay this is just for your reference now let's get into the another uh, controller which is stateful set so the stateful set you know is a workload API object used to manage the stateful application so then you need to understand what is stateful application and a uh, non-stateful application, right? So usually the Docker uh, and uh, Kubernetes are very good for non-stateful application where you don't have to have um, uh, persistent storage to be attached, right? So you can uh, create uh, those applications very easily and you can uh, do all this process. But stateful application, you need to have a persistent storage where the data is uh, mapped. So that is where this comes into the picture, okay? So stateful sets are valuable for app application that require one or more of this following uh, category. Okay, so it should be stable and unique network identifiers, and it should have a stable and persistent storage. That's why I said for stateful application you need to have a persistent storage. Okay, and you should have order and graceful deployment and scaling, and order automated and rolling updates. So this uh, criteria is what uh, it's uh, re uh, helpful for using stateful application. So if your application does not require any stable identifier or order deployment, deletion, or scaling, 
then you should go for replica set or deployment so uh, think about this when you are going for what kind of uh, controllers you want to use in kubernetes use it what is necessary for you don't use the uh, uh, no wrong uh, controllers in wrong scenarios okay so let's get into uh, jobs and cron job okay? so to give this this is a very short uh, part okay so jobs are short lived workloads so that can be used to carry out single tasks jobs as the name suggests you know it's a single task uh, that can be carried out so you want to create one or more pods and uh, what happens is job uh, controller will uh, keep retrying the execution until the specified number of uh, pods are created and then it will get terminated so jobs is a just one time uh, task which you it will keep running uh, till i you know it success uh, its job okay whereas the cron job uh, it's a repeated schedule as per you know the defined uh, time like if you have a cron job uh, defined for to run at every day at 5 am it will keep running as a repeated job at 5 am so this is useful to create periodic and recurring tasks right like uh, running a backup sending email so cron job uh, uh, controller is used for more of repeated and uh, recurring tasks so uh, I, I'm not going into more on the other uh, you know, controllers, so I just want to give this brief uh, section. So I hope uh, uh, this tutorial is informative for you and uh, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, we will see in the upcoming tutorial more in-depth on each controller with practical how to write this uh, controller files, YAML file, how to create those controllers, right? And how that uh, gets created ports and services and all those things you will see it in the upcoming tutorial. So kindly subscribe to my channel, like this video, share and comment.